Okay, so hopefully you've seen why we create muscle-driven simulations of walking. Let's talk now about the actions of muscles during the stance phase. Two basic things need to happen for walking. You need to get from point A to point B and not fall down. That's basically it. So we can figure out how we get from A to B by analyzing the re ground reaction forces and how muscles support the body weight and regulate forward propulsion. We can quantify how each muscle, for example, contributes to the ground reaction force that I'm showing here. So what we see, if we sum all of the muscle actions together, is that muscles produce nearly all of the ground reaction force. If your muscles are not on, you can't produce a ground reaction force. Imagine if I'm asleep and uh, you just hold me up here, then you let me go. I'm just gonna drop to the ground. Um, my brother used to do this when I was a little kid. He would babysit for me, come in, put me to bed. You know, I'd get half asleep. He'd stand me up and then drop me and see if I could stand up or fall to the ground. I would fall to the ground because my muscles weren't excited. I couldn't generate ground reaction force. And remember, it's that ground reaction force that counteracts gravity and supports my body weight. We also want to look, that's the, the, the vertical component of the ground reaction force. We also want to look at the fore-aft component. Forward ground reaction forces propel you forward. Backward ground reaction forces slow you down. They produce a deceleration of the mass center. Muscles in walking don't produce all of the ground reaction force. See, there's a little bit of difference between the red here and the grayed out in the back. So what is it that produces that additional ground reaction force? The difference between the gray here and the red here. It's alignment of the skeleton. We, when we're nearly aligned, our skeleton lines up and produces some ground reaction force, even absent muscle. Imagine if I was standing here again asleep, my brother's holding me up, and if he really let my legs be extended, I would probably stand there for a sec while my skeleton supports body weight before my joints started to collapse and then I would have needed my muscles to stay up. So let's see what uh, muscles do. Let's first look at the activation of three key muscles, the gluteus medius, the vasti, and the soleus. I'm plotting their activations here, so EMG versus percentage of gait cycle, and let's look first at gluteus medius. Now recall that gluteus medius is on the outside of the hip. I'm showing it as green here. Its activation is pretty strong already at the beginning of the stance phase. And then it fades slowly over the stance phase and it's pretty much off during the swing phase. Now it turns on at the end of swing in anticipation for stance. Remember there's a delay between when your muscle is excited and when it generates force. So the, the gluteus medius will come on before my foot contacts the ground so that it's ready to take body weight support. Let's look at the vasti. Remember, vasti is one of the quadriceps here. It's on at the beginning of stance phase, producing force throughout stance, and then it pretty much shuts down during the swing phase. Until the end of the swing phase, you see vasti coming on again. So you can see that plotted in the EMG. Here's the vasti on strongly in early stance. It then shuts down and then comes on at the end of swing in anticipation of the limb being loaded and the need to provide body weight support. Now soleus in the ankle, you see it's pretty much off at the beginning of stance. As stance proceeds, the soleus becomes more and more active until it's very intensely activated right here in late stance. And you can see that in the EMG, only lightly activated in early stance and then ramps up to high activation, and then it shuts off rapidly during the swing phase. That's the activations of these muscles. Let's look at what they're contributing to ground reaction force. So what I'm plotting here is the total ground reaction force. There's one body weight here. 
Remember, it goes a little above one body weight, a little below one body weight during stance. Remember that from chapter two. And gluteus medius, again shown in green here, is contributing to vertical ground reaction force during most of the stance phase. That's what it does. It provides body weight support and is essential for body weight support. Now, vasti comes on. Remember, it's strongly activated in early stance and it provides lots of body weight support and it slows you down. So it's contributing to that backward directed ground reaction force. Soleus and vasti work together at separate times. Vasti comes on early, soleus comes on late. You see soleus is hardly activated here, but at the end of stance comes on, provides lots of body weight support and forward propulsion. So this is just three of the many muscles that are active in your lower limb, but these happen to be three of the really big players. Let's look at two more, gluteus maximus and the gastrocnemius. So gluteus maximus crosses behind your hip. It's a hip extensor. You see that shown in orange here, and it's on in early stance. It then shuts down in later stance. So you see it's on in early stance here, and then it, it shuts down. It then comes on, like Vasti did, comes on at the end of swing in anticipation of body weight support. So before you load your limb, the muscle becomes excited, and before you need the support coming from G-Max, it, it becomes excited. Gastrocnemius, it's kind of like Vasti and Soleus. So G-Max is on here and then shuts down. Gastrocnemius is quiet here, then ramps up. And you can see it's EMG starting quiet and then ramping up and then shutting down during the swing phase. So what do these two muscles do? Gluteus maximus comes on in early stance and contributes to body weight support. So it's producing an upward ground, re ground reaction force and that is what supports your body weight. Gastrocnemius produces a large upward directed and forward directed ground reaction force. So it supports your body weight and pushes you forward. Now, the last plot here is skeletal alignment. Remember, muscles accounted for most of the ground reaction force, but not all of it. And the remainder comes from this skeletal alignment, which we estimated here with our dynamic simulations. Let's talk about the tibialis anterior. Uh, I didn't describe it before, but it has a key action. And I wanted to start first by, let's first just look at the, the timing of the activation of tibialis anterior. What I'm plotting here is the EMG of tibialis anterior, along with, for reference, the soleus muscle. So the EMG versus the percentage of gait cycle. So the tibialis anterior is on early in the stance phase. And that's what I'm showing here. So the tibialis anterior, just at heel contact, is excited. It's generating force and it slows the lowering of the foot to the ground in early stance. What's happening to the muscle here? The muscle is on, active, generating force and lengthening. So it's doing negative work, it's having work done on it to slow, it's acting as a brake so that your foot doesn't slap onto the ground. So that's one key function of the tibialis anterior. And if you ever walk down a hill, or early if you've started training for running, you'll notice that your tibialis anterior gets sore, and it's sore from the, the micro damage that's done during that eccentric contraction where the muscle's excited, generating force, and being stretched. Now notice also that the tibialis anterior is active during the swing phase. Remember zero to 60 roughly is the stance phase. Swing phase here is 60 to 100. And the tibialis anterior is active at that time. It's active to simply lift the foot and keep the foot from dragging. In someone who's had a stroke or other neurological injury, the tibialis anterior will not be able to be activated, and in those cases, you'll get a phenomenon called drop foot. So, interestingly, if you look at the tibialis anterior and the soleus, so here's tibialis anterior here, soleus is on the back. These are what we would call antagonistic muscles. 
and you can see tibialis anterior is on, soleus is off. Soleus ramps up, tibialis anterior turns off. Soleus ramps down, tibialis anterior cranks it up. So they're really working together to control the motion of the foot. Okay, so we've talked about why we are motivated to generate muscle-driven simulations, talked about muscle actions during the stance phase, and now in the next section we'll move on to talk about the swing phase.